expect to see socially out of this with all the turmoil government is helping stir up? Why would government want to stir up turmoil when, when well, that only no. hurts the situation more? Well, you know, they, they don't want to waste a crisis. I mean, they thrive on this because they create turmoil and then government holds itself up as the solution, right? That's how they usurp more power, by scaring the public into thinking that government is going to protect them from all the problems. But, you know, hopefully at some point people will recognize that government is the problem, not the solution. But that's why guys like Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, they can tap into this dissatisfaction. People are looking for scapegoats, right? Donald Trump can talk about the immigrants and try to blame our problems on them. Uh, and there are a lot of people that want to accept that because it seems like an easy scapegoat. And yes, we can just solve our problems by building a wall or deporting people. But that's not even going to scratch the surface of what our real problems are. I agree. And of course, you've got Bernie Sanders just saying, well, let's just redistribute the wealth. There's not going to be any wealth left to redistribute. Exactly. We need to create wealth. Uh, I mean, as you said, deporting a bunch of illegals isn't going to fix anything. But at the same time, it's outrageous to ship them in, let them have babies for free when I can't go to their country and do that. And then the Democrats are creating a new socialist underclass to kind of be used for low level jobs, but also get welfare. You know, the new model like Walmart has is you get a low paying job, but also government assistance. That's exactly what they want. So yeah. they're definitely exploiting the immigrants, but they want to exploit them politically to basically go yeah, to the. Uh, yeah. But Alex, you know, when my grandparents came here, all four of my grandparents immigrated legally. And of course, it was a lot easier to immigrate legally back then. Uh, but there was no welfare. There was no, there was no nothing. There were no government programs at all. There were no food stamps. There was no housing vouchers. My parents, my grandparents came here in search of freedom. That's what we want. So let's turn off the magnets. Let's get rid of welfare. Get rid of these programs. I, and, and I don't just object to illegal immigrants getting welfare. I don't want legal immigrants. Corporations get rid of it. Um, well, I mean, there shouldn't be federal welfare. You're supposed to have yes, local welfare and the churches. Yeah, we don't want it for anybody. I want people to come to this country to work, not 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 to not to live off the government. But I'm upset when native-born Americans live off the government. I, we can't just blame these problems on the immigrants. And even if we got all the illegal immigrants out of this country, we would be in just as bad a shape I as agree. we are now. In fact, it might even be worse. It'd probably be uh, worse because most of them work. Most of them are working hard. Huh? A lot of them are working hard. It's true. It's just it's just they're being turned into a political army to vote to take the guns. That's why I'm so against them. But they do contribute in many ways. It's the political bent. I want to go to calls here. But but since you raise these points about policies and where things are going, what do you think about the Hillary Clinton situation in your gut? Uh, I think Trump's for real now. I mean, I've been watching this enough. I, where do you think that's going? Well, you know, Trump is for we, uh, real when we have a big field. I think if the field of establishment candidates narrows down, uh, you know, I don't know how much greater his support is going to rise. I mean, he might be near a ceiling. And so when it whittles down, uh, I think that, you know, he won't necessarily have the majority uh, in order to get that, that nomination. But who knows? Like anything is possible. Right. This, the, the situation is pretty bad. But Hillary Clinton, you know, she is a very flawed candidate if she gets this nomination. And I think she's very beatable uh, because of all of her baggage. I mean, she should be in jail. She should be running for president. And if she was a normal person, she probably would already be, uh, you know, charged with a crime whether it's obstruction of justice or uh, perjury or any of the other things that she's done that, that are illegal. She told but her no, minions lies, yeah. suborning perjury. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, she's a very beatable candidate. So if the, the Democrats were smart, they would do something. I mean, Joe Biden is probably, I bet that the Republicans would rather run against Hillary than a Joe Biden. I mean, people may kind of make fun of Biden, but, you know, you know, there's a lot of sympathy for him now. His son, Bo, died. I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I think Biden, Biden is probably a bigger threat to whoever the Republicans nominate. I mean, Bernie Sanders would be, would be a gift. I mean, if we could run against Bernie Sanders. But I, I, I don't know if uh, even the Democrats are dumb enough. Sure, I don't know if I agree with you, though. I mean, I agree Biden is slicker, has less baggage and kind of gets to the blue collar workers and people. But Hillary is a woman. And they can just hype, she's a woman, vote for a woman. I think that really is a trump card. Well, maybe the best thing we could do then 
you know, Carly Fiorina, I don't know if she's been on your show. She was on my show. I like her. I mean, she's a smart yeah, I like gal. her too, yeah. You know, and so, I mean, any who, I mean, if you had her against Hillary, I mean, you know, she, there, you take away the woman advantage. And, and now, you know, it's going to be a woman president no matter who you vote for. So now it's who's more competent. And I think if it's a, if it's a race about competence and intelligence and real resumes, you know, I think Carly beats out Hillary any day. Sure. She's run major companies and hired tens of thousands of people and made billions of dollars. All Hillary Clinton's done is go around and commit crimes. We're going to go to break and talk to Sherry, Aaron, Peter, Rob, Adam. I know you're getting ready to go give a big speech. Uh, maybe you can stay five minutes the next hour. If you can't, I understand, but I want to be able to get to at least five or six of these calls with Peter right. Schiff. Thank you, sir. And then we've got your website, of course, Europac.com, and we're just waiting for the next shoe to drop. Again, Peter Schiff uh, is our guest, and you know he's really accurate, uh, other than saying he thought the bubble would pop about a year ago, and then now it's popping now. Uh, so they've really attacked him on TV news for uh, you know prematurely predicting it. I mean. This thing is so giant, so out of control, so crazy. I don't know when it's going to pop, but it's kind of like you're standing on top of a volcano and it's rumbling and some lava's starting to bubble. I mean, is it going to erupt today or six months from now? I don't know, but I'm moving away from the volcano. And, and, and Peter Schiff told us it was going to start erupting, and it is. When the chickens come home to roost on this bubble, on the derivatives, it's going to be spectacular. And we just sit here and watch it with Marvel as it unfolds, see all the preparations for totalitarian control. The system intends to use this coming crisis to get more power, as Peter Schiff was talking about earlier. He joins us right now for this segment, the next. Thanks for holding. Sherry in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Thanks for calling. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, I have um, on the economy, I have a, a, a comment and a question. Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Um, but what I what I'm seeing is like a guy on a buckboard holding back these horses, and so for for September, October, and even into November, he pulls up on those reins and he circles the 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 buckboard's headed towards this cliff, and he t turns it around, and then he turns it around again. But come November and in and past November, he can't pull back anymore. That thing is going to go down, free fall, and then break apart and go down again, break apart a little on a ledge, go down again. And But I do think it'll come back. I'm not going to buy any more silver until it goes to single digits. But that would be, for me, focusing just on my silver uh, iShares. That's going to be November or just beyond. Sure. Do you have now, a question for Peter? Yeah, here's the question. In in 2019-220, I think there'll be a turnaround. See what he thinks of this. I got a validation from the Social uh -oh. Security. Okay, okay, just, listen, I'm going to jump yeah, to the next but, person. That's an important question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, it's too hard to know when the situation is going to turn around when you're talking about 2020. But my advice uh, to the caller, she says she wants to wait for single digits to buy more silver uh, silver hasn't been a single digits in a long time. It's about fourteen and a half dollars an ounce now. Um, you know, what are you going to do if it goes above twenty? Are you still going to wait for single digits? You know, I think there's far more upside in the price of silver. We've come down from fifty, which is where we were on the highs a few years ago. So I think you know there's a good chance while you're waiting for it to go down to single digits, it might go above fifty. So I would suggest that people who are interested in silver. Buy some now. I mean, if you get lucky enough to buy more in the single digits, well, I guess you can do so. But I wouldn't hold my breath and I wouldn't wait for that because you may be waiting for an indefinite period of time and you may end up chasing the market and buying much, much higher. Right. And so the, the, the money you were trying to save, you might end up losing a lot more. Sure. Peter, do you expect more big fireworks in September and October? Because that's usually when we see the big crashes. This time we're seeing them in late summer, early fall. What's that mean? No, we're just getting started. I mean, you know, the market, the technicals are breaking down now here in August. And I think as we go into September, uh, the technical picture is, is, is not bright for the U.S. stock market. And I think that the market could continue to fall, especially if, the, if people still think that the Fed's going to raise rates, maybe not in September, but maybe October now they're talking about. And so as long as that threat is dangling out there, that is going to put pressure on Better. the U.S. stock market, which is already very expensive. And remember, for a while, people were thinking, hey, it's OK if the Fed raises rates because if the economy will be strong when they're raising rates. And normally when the Fed raises rates, you know, the, the market goes up for a few years before it goes down. 
But that's because the economy normally is strong when the Fed raises rates. That's right. Right now, the economy is weakening. All right, let's jam in one more. Before we go to break, come back with more. Peter in Washington, you're on the air with Peter Schiff. Go ahead. Uh, hello, Mr. Schiff. Can you hear me? Yes, he can hear you. Yeah. What, what's your What's your question? Okay, okay. The question I have is, uh, uh, what do you think of Jim Rickard's uh, advice that one temporarily uh, has uh, dollars but buys gold kind of slowly? Well, you know, I, I think the dollar has already rallied, you know, as much as it's going to do in general. I mean, there might be a little bit more. Uh, Jim's advice probably was pretty good if you followed it a couple of years ago, uh, but I don't think following it now. And I know I talked to Jim quite a bit. He lives not too far from me in Connecticut. And we're pretty I'll much. I'll tell you what, we got to go to break again. Sorry to cut you off. Stay there, Peter. You can finish your question. We're going to come back in 70 Thank seconds with a conclusion. Peter's got to go here in about four or five minutes. We're going to try to jam in these calls as quickly as possible. Uh, Peter in Washington, did uh, Peter Schiff answer your question? He got cut off by the break. Did you have anything else you wanted to say? Yeah, okay. he basically answered it. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir, for calling. Uh, let's. Sorry, I'm rude running through people quick, but I waited to go to calls. I apologize. Rob in Vancouver, do you have a question for Peter Schiff? Yeah, hey, Peter. Um, I've met you a couple times in mining conferences. What's your thoughts on uh, junior mining? Um, $1,000 gold, these guys really don't exist, and you seem like you're a big fan. Uh, any thoughts? Will there be a trigger here? Or, uh, that's the question. Thanks. Yeah, well, you know, gold, they have a hard time at $1,140 gold, too. And, and of course, you know, there's no money to fund exploration. Uh, so those companies have had terrible, terrible problems in the last several years. I don't know how much worse it's going to get, uh, but I do believe that ultimately it's going to end up being a bonanza for the guys that remain. And, of course, we've invested such a little amount in, in exploration and development projects over the years that when gold prices take off, it's going to be a long time before the extra supply comes on stream. So I think it's going to be very good for the ones that survive. And of course, you know, we've been buying ma mainly the major mining companies that are well positioned uh, to ride this bear market out and to really profit uh, when both the gold price and the sentiment around the future gold price turns. All right. Great question. Thank you, uh, Rob in Vancouver. Let's go to Aaron in Washington, D.C. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Alex. Um, Mr. Schiff, all of your Europec funds are losing double digit in one year rate of returns with your precious metal gold fund losing negative 44.48% according to Bloomberg this morning. How do you account for this sort of losses that you're being touted as some sort of an accurate expert? You well, he's had huge profits before and he says they're riding out a bear market. I mean, I'm answering yeah. his question for him. Yeah, so are the funds that we manage are down along with all of the foreign markets. I mean, our gold fund is faring about the same, maybe a little bit better than your typical gold fund during this period of time. I mean, gold stocks have gone down dramatically. We are not short-term investors. We're positioning ourselves for the long run. I'm not trying to be a short-term market timer, nor do I claim to be one. You, in fact, you answered his question before he, before he went to him. You were just talking about that, about this is a long-term yeah. deal. And many of our funds, you know, if you compare them to our benchmarks, we are doing very well relative to uh, the funds, the, the benchmarks that we compete with. It's just that we are working in a in a strong dollar environment. When I invest in foreign markets, I'm investing in foreign currencies. Look, I have a, a company in Canada, Euro Pacific Canada, and those clients are making money on the same stocks that my American clients are losing money in because they're measuring their stocks in Canadian dollars, and there they're going up. And my American clients are measuring in U.S. dollars where they're going sure. down. Well, where you've but really been right is predicting this downturn accurately. That's the whole point. Yeah. Uh, and, thank and you, Aaron. Now, you know, we had a bubble. My clients were all losing money between 1996 and 2000 during the dot-com bubble and the dollar bubble. I was positioning myself for, for the aftermath of that bubble. The returns that my clients made were from 2001 to 2008. And the returns dwarf the losses. And basically, all the stocks that I owned that were going down when the dollar was going up, they all skyrocketed when the dollar went down. Sure, that's so how I, you generated billions of dollars. Real quick. Yeah, and I think the money that we're losing now is a down payment on the profits that we're going to make. And I think it's an opportunity. Many of my clients, of course, will simply add to their accounts to take advantage of the fact that their foreign stocks have gone down because the dollar's gone up. And it's a great opportunity for people to come on board who haven't had accounts with me before to buy into the foreign markets while the dollar gives them a great entry point.
because this dollar strength is not going to last. I think it's a bubble that's going to pop. And I think, you know, those losses are going to 